What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create a key plan in Revit. So this is a cool little uh, annotation tool that you can use to help uh, navigate around your drawing or just to make uh, your plans a lot more readable. But before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. Okay, so let's get started, let's create this key plan in Revit. So here, as you can see, I've got this template. Uh, this is something that I've done in yesterday's tutorial. And if you want to check that out, please check out the link in the description. So as you can see here, we've got a floor plan. And then here we've got this uh, title block. And here, as I said in the previous video, I have left some room over here so I can add a key plan later on. Now, a key plan, you don't need it when you have a floor plan like this. So this is just a, a simple floor plan that's a scale is 1 to 75. Now let's say we want to do this, do this in 1 to 50. So if I go over here, double click, and maybe change this to 1 to 50. Now as you can see, it's a lot larger and we no longer can fit it on screen. So if I double click now, as you can see, it doesn't really fit over here in my uh, title block or on my sheet of paper. So how do you fix this? Well, you would need to kind of... Uh, basically create three plans for this or two plans in this case let me go ahead with three plans so one will be this portion over here the second one will be this portion over here and the third one will be this portion over here so how do you do that well you go here first to the floor plan and this is the floor plan in question and now I'm just going to divide it into those three sections and I'm just going to do that going by going here to the view tab you find this match line and this is the line that you use to create that separation. And let's let's do the separation over here, perhaps, kind of like this. So one line over here, and then let's do one more, kind of on this side. Maybe move it a bit. Yeah. So this is fitting in right pretty nicely so let's say we've got these two match lines like this now moving forward uh, we need to, to create three separate plans for this so go over here to your floor plan the selected floor plan right click go to duplicate view and you have duplicate as dependent so once you create that as you can see it, it just opens this uh, dependent link over here so we need to do this three times because we have three of these segments so duplicate is dependent and one more time uh, duplicate as dependent now the reason this is called the dependent is because if I go here to uh, the the original floor plan and maybe change the scale to 1 to 100 if I go here as you can see the scale has changed so that's the reason why I did it as dependent now I'm going to bring the scale back to 1 to 50 just because uh, that's what we need for our uh, for our sheet of paper down below so let's go here to our floor plan uh, and let's delete this uh, paper over here then let's go to dependent number one and here I'm just going to select this crop region and uh, just change it a bit so I'm just going to select it and change it over here so only to select the first portion of the floor plan so kind of do it like this then you go to number two, select the same crop region, and then change it to select only the middle part, kind of like this. Okay, and let's do uh, the third part. So select the thing, and then just do the third part. So like this, and maybe bring this in a bit more over here. Okay, so we've got three of these. And now let's just call it dependent one, two, and three. I'm going to leave the names; it doesn't really matter for now. And here, let me go back to my uh, to my sheet, so floor plan, and let's go over here and place only dependent number one. And as you can see, we can place it like that. And uh, what I prefer to do is, in these cases, uh, when you have a situation like this, let's delete it for now. Let's go back into dependent one and let's. Uh, pull this in a bit this section head and then also this crop region I don't want to have it visible so I'm just going to uncheck it here to make it invisible and then we only have this line to represent that cutoff point okay so let's go back to our uh, to our sheet of paper so let's find it here it is floor plan okay now let's find that dependent number one and let's drag it over here 
Okay, so this looks uh, decent enough. I'm just going to remove the title line because I don't think I really need it. And then maybe we can place it like this here on screen. Of course, you can make it smaller by adjusting this, but in this case, it's fitting just perfectly, so I'm not going to adjust that. Now, here we only have one portion of the floor plan, and I actually want to have the whole, uh, just the whole floor plan somewhere on screen so I can know which portion I'm looking at, and that's the reason why we need this uh, key plan over here. So let's create a key plan family that we're going to be using to represent this uh, this plan. So for that, uh, just go here to your floor plan and duplicate it one more time, but just regular duplicate, go over here and just make it really small. So let's do one to 500, for example. And now you can just go into VG, so just type in VG and turn off annotations because you don't really need it, you just need the outline of the building. Now once we have that, uh, we can go over here to our floor plan and then we can find that uh, copied uh, floor plan and drag it over here. Just place it like that and eliminate the title line and here we go. So we've got this little key plan over here but this is uh, not really representing which part of the building we have over here. So I want to actually have some sort of a representation and if I go here to annotate I would really like to use something like uh, region for this filled region, but as you can see, I cannot access that tool uh, from my uh, from my sheet. So a workaround of that is to create an actual annotation symbol, so this thing, annotation symbol, to represent our key plan. So before we do that, first we need to use the detail line to get the outline of this key plan. So you just kind of go around the building, it doesn't have to be perfect, of course, just to get the outline of the building, so maybe go like that like this and finish it off. Then you select the whole floor plan and you delete it and you can actually delete the floor plan here. You don't really need it anymore. We've got this representation right now. And now you can leave it like that, but I think it's cool to have a separate uh, symbol for that. So to create a symbol family, just go here to file, new, uh, go to family, uh, open that up. And here for families, go to annotations and here try to find metric generic annotation. Open that up and this is what we get. So I'm just going to delete this part, I don't need it. And uh, let's go back uh, to our, uh, yeah, here. And just to select the whole thing, go Control C to copy, and then go to your family, Control V to paste, and just paste it, paste it in the middle of the family. Maybe turn on uh, 10 lines just to make it easier to work with. Okay, now you need to represent the first uh, dependent, the second dependent, or and the third dependent, or the third part of the building. So to do that, now we can finally use our uh, filled region. And here I just use the rectangle, go from here to here, create one rectangle, go here into edit, solid fill, and black, that's what I want to have. And I just hit finish, and we get this. Now let's create a similar one over here. So maybe go from here to here, go finish, and let's do one more going from here to here. Go finish. Okay, so let's select the first one. Let's go over here, come on. Okay, so this is the first one. Go here to the visibility and create a new parameter. So just go over here, click new parameter, make it an instance parameter and let's call it uh, D1 for dependent one. Hit okay, then select the second one create a parameter, let's call this one D2 for dependent 2, make sure that it's an instance parameter, hit OK, apply, then go with the third one, again, uh, here parameter, new parameter, instance parameter, and this one is, yeah, you guessed it, D3. Hit OK, again, OK, and here if we open up uh, family types, you should have three of these parameters as uh, just on, off, uh, on off parameters, so just hit apply, okay, and now let's load that into the project. Now, in this case, I cannot load it in because it's uh, a wrong name, I already have something called uh, family one, so I'm just going to save it uh, on my desktop as, I don't know, like a key plan, and save it, and now I can load it into my project. So load it in, and you can hit escape right now, and let's just go over here to my uh, to my floor plan or to my actual uh, sheet and let's delete this we don't need this anymore and I'll go with symbol and you can actually place it over here now this is all black right now and we actually don't want that we want to turn off 
D2 and D3, hit apply, and as you can see, it's now showing the key plan, and it's only showing the part of the floor plan that we're actually using, and that's this part. So yeah, that's how you create it, and now you can just use this symbol on the rest of them, you just uncheck this, check that, so you have this, or maybe if you want to have it like uh, inverted, so maybe the black is what's not showing and white is what is showing, you can use that as well. So anyway, it's a simple parametric symbol uh, for Revit, and it's really useful to be used, or you can leave it like this, be an empty floor plan, but yeah. This is how it works. And maybe you can write some text down, maybe call it uh, se segment D or something like that. Uh, you can do whatever you want. But anyway, that's how you create these key plans in Revit and how do you, and basically that's how you divide a floor plan into multiple segments to view it easier on smaller sheets. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new about key plans. It's a very uh, interesting topic and it's very cool to create a parametric symbol. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to download this uh, key plan family as well as this uh, project that I'm using, uh, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.